you know, muscle. <laughs> All right, uh, let's get started. So I'm trying to split you guys into different groups for the project. I can guarantee you are you will be successful. And where is Zach? We're missing three, two. Okay. Zach and Zing, right? Okay, let's wait for them. So we can let's take a look at the Okay. If you go to the website, if you can now see all these updates, refresh the web page. If you haven't been there uh, to the website too often, so you'll know the trick. Just refresh everything. And student lab reports. Only seven of you guys, you are going to upload your lab reports to here. So if you click, you'll see what the suggest is. Um, you know, just add it to the web page. Make sure you have a uh, pretty clear just don't let me spend 30 minutes to look out, to find out the link for the lab report, okay? Um, within five seconds, it will be okay. If it takes like one second more, it's gonna be five points off. <laughs> Just make it clear, make the link on the top. If you are in both my controller and robotics, as you guys are, um, probably have two columns or, you know, in the table, two columns or two rows. So this is uh, CE351 lab reports, lab one, lab two, lab three. Like that, right? Okay. And C four thirty two, lab one, lab two, lab three. Will that work? So the tutorial, since you haven't done that, so all these guys are super familiar with that. Uh, just look at the. I send you an email. Do you receive that? The email for the user. Yeah, there's a tutorial link for how to edit the web page. I think you are. It should should be easy for you. You have been doing similar stuff for a while. Uh, it's not difficult. If you see any problems. For example, you upload everything to the web page, but it's not showing here, then let me know. I will help you. Okay, and also I swap the order of the two wheel balancing car and the robot arm because I want to guarantee that this guy, this project can be done so I can have a product out of it. So I'm having multiple products right now. I don't want to. You know, launch a company, launch a website, but with only one product on the web page, right? So probably I want to have at least a five. So a pretty nice, so something like this. Let me show you. That's a Swiss guy, and he is a lecturer in lecturer in one of the colleges in Switzerland. His, his name is Joris uh, Gaudi, I think. And he has a lab, and he hacked a lot of lab equipment. So if you look at the projects he has, you know, all these parts, and this one as well, that's a digital, mic digital microfluidics kit. And other things, the, for example, the vortex, uh, you know, spin coder and microscope, whatever. So all these different kind of projects. And he finally got a several really cool products. Yeah, if I have my website, I'm gonna make the shop tag a little bigger. <laughs> it's easier to get in. So see the products he has, you know, that's called open drop digital microfluidics. Uh, I, I did the pretty much the same topic in my PhD. That's actually what I do over there. Uh, it's an electrode array can actuate the droplets around just using electric field. And it worked pretty, pretty well. Uh, it's been fabricated on wafers <coughs> and glass slides. But however, since people have developed the PCB version digital microfluidics, the cost will be lower. So they don't need a clean room to fabricate that substrate. But they can still uh, have fun with this guy. I think I showed, showed this to some of you already. Let's take a look at the... Oh. Um... This one. 
I mean, anyway, he's selling this for 600 euros. Over 600 euros. 900 euros? <laughs> anyway. See how that works? So that's a PCB-based electrode array. And on the top, there's a top plate, which is cold to breathe. And um, God, I forgot the name of the material. It's been five years. But anyway, it's conductive on the top. And it, uh, the top plate is grounded. And it's programmed. So the CPU underneath is programmed. So it is able to control every single electrode. So there are several functions. For example, dispensing. You have a bigger droplet, and then can be dispensed as thing, smaller tiny droplets and move them around. And you can merge them, you can split them. Okay. It looks more fun than actually how you can use it. I mean, it's not super useful. It used to be super promising back to 20, you know, 20. 2001 and 2002, around that time, this was developed uh, by a professor in Duke, and for the first time, he demonstrated that works. And in the following 20 years, this kind of technology became super popular. But people are struggling to find a real, real life application for this. There are, what I know, as long as I know, there are two. Entrepreneurs, they start up two, you know, two different companies, and one in Macau, one uh, in the U.S. And that company eventually was acquired by uh, Illumina for I don't know how, how much money, but still, right now they posted the picture of the final product on their website, but you couldn't buy it. It's still not available after 20 years. Uh, there are so many other issues. It looks super cool. But for example, it's hard to sterilize the electrode array, and you couldn't heat it up really easily because the coating will be melted after you after a certain temperature. There are so many other uh, issues. It looks you know cool, looks so cool, and apparently you can make money from it since he's selling for nine hundred euros. And I think there's a faculty member just got a assistant professor job in Steel Boulder. She uh, came from uh, Europe. And I think she brought this thing, this kit, to Steel Boulder. So the students in the computer science department, I don't know if you, if Zach knows that. There's a, is your, is your brother in Steel Boulder? It's computer science. So there's a new professor, a lady, and uh, she has, she's holding, hosting a lot of uh, work, workshops, uh, let the high school kids or freshman students to play around with exactly the same kit. If you search through Bauer's uh, computer science, you can see on the top, and I think her last name is starting with A, that's why. And she was new to Sue Bauer, but she <laughs> is using this kit for, for teaching. And But I really don't think, uh, if I'm making this one, I can make it within 100 bucks, even lower. So you can see the profit behind it. Maybe, yeah. And she even published a paper on how to use it, how to use that kit. <laughs> and the reason I know this guy is because uh, back in two, uh, 2015, I developed a, a two-row uh, electrode array using transistors to drive it, so they don't need to use a huge voltage amplifier anymore. And I get that paper published, and he sold that paper, and he made this into a product. So that's why I know him, And but he has done way better than I did, because I went to a postdoc and I started doing something else. But you can see that, you know, if you can make a product like this and design the package, design the box, and put in the box and upload to your website, you don't even have to design the app, you know, for people to pay. You can probably just use PayPal, let them check, check out. Um, or make it available on Amazon, eBay. Um, but that shouldn't be the only product for, for, for my company. Probably I'm going to launch it next year. So the uh, balance, the car will be one of the key products. And there will be another one, which will be in the microcontroller class. And you guys will be developing, since you guys are in the group two, right, in the second group, which will be that one. 
Yeah, I don't want to spend too much time, so let's just take a look really quickly. So actually, which is the second uh, tutorial you are going to follow, and it's not available. I don't know why. <laughs> um, anyway, okay. Well, I can show you this later. <clears throat> uh, the thermometer uh, network is not able to allow users to change, to customize the Wi-Fi username and password. So what I did is I program everything and sell it to the to the customer. But however, whenever they, for example, if I'm gone, I left, I'm not in Durango anymore, or I totally just went back to China for whatever reason and never coming back. They don't have any any customer service, right? Because uh, they couldn't program it. It's hard to train every single stuff in their company to to learn how to program not controllers. So it's better to have a control panel, so uh, after you press the push button, can enter that interrupt routine. So get into that interrupt routine can allow you to modify the Wi-Fi username and password. So you can, they can, whenever they change that credential of the router, so you can do that. So currently, everything has been working, but that's the only thing I haven't done. Uh, it's gonna be another product later on. Um, and There'll be another ones like the maze solver, the robot car, the maze solver, and the equine stuff. So all different kinds of products. If I launch the website, I hope all these products will be available. So um, I hope you guys can help with that. <clears throat> Let's take a look at Right after the second week, we are going, we are going to start working with a two-wheel balanced car. So I'm sorry for the first two weeks, it's going to be boring. Uh, we just cover some fundamental stuff like the sensors and power supply things. Re really quickly, just two weeks. Okay, probably two homework assignments. The first one for rectifiers and second one for sensors and actuators. And I'm going to run, uh, just introduce uh, code to you line by line so you understand what's going on inside of my controller and there are several examples so the original developer is actually this guy so this balanced car is called uh, YABR I don't know what that stands for but this guy came from uh, Netherlands Holland um, he has the code uploaded and uh, the explanation for the code in detail but if you just directly use the code it won't work uh, depends on the shape of the car it's not working pretty well so you have to modify it but first you have to understand it first um i so for example if you only let the two wheel balance the car stand on the table right he has this kind of lens of the code the script in arduino so i simplified everything to pretty much like this and it works so if you understand what's going on, you need you 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 are going to know what you need. But all the redundant stuff, which is not not, not useful. So just uh, I already upload everything to the website. It doesn't like all the other courses you took uh, for me in the uh, you know in the past. I normally block a part of the uh, sketch, right? And then you I will let you to fill in your code and make it work. It's wasting time. I need a product, so I'm going to provide whatever I have, anything I know to you. And I just need a two-wheel balanced car, which can be controlled by a remote. The remote can be a joystick or it can be a smartphone app. You will let me know at the very beginning. You cannot change later because you'll fail if that's the uh, way you want to work with. You probably want to let me know what you want to do. And you need to overcome all the challenges. Not like I want to, it's not working. I'm going to switch to another one. Don't do that. That won't work. And this guy. He used uh, the joystick with the uh, wireless transmitter, so it's not based on smartphones. And there are many other examples that are based on smartphones you can use if you like. You can customize your own app using Android Studio. Uh, I don't have a tutorial and I don't know how to do it, but there are so many tutorials online. I don't think that would be hard. Follow the Android tutorial. I think you are expert for pretty much. You have done that. Right? 
So Android Studio make an app out of it and control uh, the car using uh, through Bluetooth because your phone has Bluetooth uh, modules so you can communicate with the car. That's one solution. Hello and welcome back to another one of my videos. In this video I will explain in detail how this remotely controlled balancing robot works and how you can build one. He has three First parts for this entire tutorial, so three videos downloaded earlier. After uploading, you can watch the video or if you just want to make it run in two days, just build a car and use my code, to upload the code to the back controller, it's going to work immediately. Okay, that's the first example or reference. I don't like the, the look of his car. Because he cut everything using uh, the wood board. And even the wheels are wooden, <laughs> which is weird to me. And you are not going to do that. Okay. There are many other different examples. So this guy duplicated it. And I think uh, it works way better than the original one, even. So it's based on the 3D printed frame. That way. So this robot is constantly doing a dance between falling forward and falling backwards. Over you here, see it looks way nicer, right? We've got a Bluetooth link on the. And here is a remote. That's a joystick remote. I, I can imagine that uh, this is pretty much the final product I prefer, something similar to that. Uh, you can imagine maybe um, if you sell this to some remote areas. They probably don't have a smartphone to connect to this car, right? So it's better to have a joystick control panel. So they unbox the kit, they put the battery into the cartridge, they part it up, it's gonna work. Start working instantly. That's what I what I really want. And in the future, if you want to add a wireless or a smartphone app, which is a plus, but I think let's probably make this kind of thing work first. I can imagine during the semester, probably um, after the, you know, fourth, probably not fourth, the sixth, the seventh week, and you guys are testing your to balance the car in the aisle over there, so you are making other people feel bad about themselves. <laughs> we can do this. I'm joking. Uh, I hope you guys can make it work. That's a that's a goal. Okay, that's the second version. And uh, there are many other really cool projects. So there's another version here. And there's a, even a balanced stick. stick. <laughs> I've never heard about that. So the stick can balance itself on the table. <clears throat> but they are using the same sensors, same theory. So if you know how to use MPU 6050, you, uh, you will be able to do any of these things you know, similar to, to, to this kind of project. Is that interesting? Is that useless? <laughs> it's useless, but cool, right? It's really cool, I like it. But we are not making that because it's not a product. So keep in mind in the future, I know you, you guys have been in the college for many years, and you know what's going on. But when I was having the workshops with the middle school and high school students, they don't have any concept. They, they are not pay, paying their bills. And their, pa they, their parents do pretty much everything. And, you know, when you are talking to other people and do you have time, right? Can I help with this normally? You know, they say, no, I, I'm super busy. It's not because they are busy, it's just because you don't have money for them. And no time, no money. This sounds like super cool, but this was happening. So, this is cool, but it's not getting me or getting the product, the company, any profit in the future, probably. So we don't have time to work on work with this. We have more more important project to work with. And <clears throat> there's another one which is super cool, and you can see this one somewhere else. But let me show you this one. That's amazing.
magnet. Form different shapes. There are connectors for sending signals and receiving signals. Are still struggling to make one drone to work. They are combining different drones together to make. All different shapes. <laughs> all right but i mean for all these different uh, kind of applications the the key sensor is actually the accelerometer which is the imu inertial motion unit and we are going to use that one intensively this semester okay it's all about the accelerometer okay so that's the scope of this course. And I need you guys uh, to be split into different groups so I can make sure it's, uh, we are going to have some successful products. Two to three uh, of you guys can form one group. Let me know, okay? So for the 3D printing uh, work for the frames, you don't need to do it on by yourself. I found a person in 103, Engineering 103, uh, who actually requested that uh, some challenging project instead of doing the coursework in 103 because he used to be in another college and he has been learning this for a while. So, I, I mean, great, that's great. So I told him uh, we can probably assign all this 3D printing work you guys need to him. So he will do that job for you, do that work. So you're not wasting your time on any, any mechanical stuff, which is taking your time. I don't, I don't, I don't want you guys to do that. Okay, focus on digital software, algorithms, all this kind of thing, control theory, but not mechanical, okay? Uh, I'll introduce that guy to you, but you need to come up with a design from different groups. So probably three groups, one, two, three, or whatever you want to form, just you know, but we need uh, probably three groups, two, two, three, like that. Uh, so in each group, if you have two people in the group on the team, so when you get trying to get started, how do you want to split the tasks to different team members and make it more efficient? So you can co complete all the tasks faster. So for example, the mechanical parts, you don't need to fabricate that. You just assign this one to somebody else. However, there might be a case, right? So for example, he's super busy. We are not paying him. And he just said, and I don't even know if he can uh, do diff three different designs. But just in case that happens, you still have to probably come up with a, a strategy to cut or 3D print your own parts. Um, so except for the mechanical parts, and I'm saying for the hardware and software, there might be two main tasks. The first one, to make your, to balance the car can stand on the table. This is what I have on my tutorial, which is not super difficult because you, you just download the code, make the connection correct, and got a PCB out of it. Do not use the breadboard stuff. You can, you can test it for a few times, but after you are done with the, all the wire connections, make a PCB out of it. So have two or three people on the team, so you can let another one to another person to work on the PCB design while you are working on something else. Okay. Also, there's another part which is kind of independent to whatever you are working on the, the car itself, which is the PID controller, which is the wireless communication. You don't have to connect the wireless transmitter to the car when you are debugging that task. Let's draw it here. If you go to companies, always a team, a 
way bigger team, right? You have many team members. How can I manage this? Um, so the car itself has a PID controller, MCU and NPU 6050. Just make it work, stand on the table. That's the first task. And at the same time, the other person on the team can work with the joystick. And wireless communication. And you do not have to connect everything to the car because this guy is, or if you make two of these, um, probably not. Just one of these, this guy is testing the PID controllers. The other one is uh, testing the uh, wireless transmission from here to a module. That's a antenna. So the communication between the joystick and this, this wireless sensor will be um, directly wired up to your mouth controller on the, on the car. So, but the thing is, you don't have a car, how, do, how can you demonstrate it? How can you verify? You can use the MCU without, to, without putting this on the car. It's actually Arduino Uno. And you can look at the signals being received by the MCU in the serial monitor. To debug it, see if you are receiving correct signals. Because what this will work eventually is you are sending commands from the joystick to the MCU, which is controlling the MPU and which is controlling the car. Okay, but you don't have this since this guy is working on this. So, but you can still make trying to make this communication pass work by looking at the serial monitor of the MCU. So for example, if you push the joystick, see if you are receiving a forward or or anything on your MCU or in the serial monitor. If you receive that one, which you know, this will be the output of the MCU to the MPU. So you can make this a modular design. So if this one works, I know these are the outputs. So inputs from the joystick outputs are those, all these commands. As long as I got all these commands correctly from the joystick, I'm done for this module. I don't know if the other one, the other person makes that part work. We just made a connection. So if I receive this command, I'm going to do this. If I receive this, I do this. This is a, a few if statements, right? So that's how you can work on one team and split the tasks for uh, each team member. I was thinking about this yesterday when I was talking to uh, Dr. Shrik and uh, Jad Huff. So I was thinking like, how many projects you have in robotics tool, two to three, in my controllers, three to four to five. And you also have senior seminar. It's just impossible. I, I think we should uh, focus on fewer projects and make uh, better products all the way instead of uh, do everything but not complete for every, everyone. Any questions? Do you like this idea or any comments? Good? Okay. Do you want to join? I don't know. You, you can talk, talk to them. So he's Trevor Sharp and he transferred from uh, San Juan College. Uh, he got a computer science degree over there and he has done a few projects in like machine learning, Java, C++, and he's pretty good at programming. Um, I don't know how many hardware projects experience you, you, you have had, but uh, these guys have worked on the uh, microcontroller stuff in the past semester in the spring. We had a pretty intensive uh, series of Q 
tutorials in that class. But I think you can pick up all these things really quickly, no problem. All right, I'll let you guys decide how you want to form all these teams. And finally, you are going to give a presentation um, for each team, so three teams, it's going to be three presentations, and a final project a report as well, and also uh, the design files, all the sketch need to be commented pretty well. And software, the software should be uploaded to GitHub, make it available, probably not to the public since I want to sell it. So make it available to only within the class. And yeah, that's it. Even the pr private uh, version is not available for. Okay, then then not GitHub for now, probably. Yeah. Okay. Could each team like only make it available to you? Is that an option? Right. Yeah. So, but you have your uh, web page have your have your uh, you know probably diagrams or. Um, Reports just narrative contents, but not code. Do not show the code on the on the web page. Should we or should we should not? Probably not. I mean, I'm thinking if you can help each other, probably we can make it faster. But it's not good because it's not fair. Somebody have already developed something, but you know, don't let's don't do that. We will exchange ideas later, but not at the very beginning. Will that work? After I. Great, great in your <laughs> homework. I'll let you exchange. Okay, sounds great to me. <clears throat> you know, as a professor, you cannot be rich unless you start a company. All right. Uh, if I accept all the uh, fundings or grants from uh, external founder or sponsor, uh, if I work it within the college, I have to, you know, <laughs> contribute two thirds of the funding to the college. I'm only getting one third. Uh, if in phase two for this equine project, if I'm getting a million. Probably not. I'm not. If I'm getting a million, I have to give like six hundred thousand dollars to the college. So I need my company um, for phase two. But phase one, I have already made the contribution to the college, which is great. It's helping, helping everything. Um, no problem with it. Uh, but you need to really need to plan up right, what you want to do in the future. All right. <clears throat> Okay, for rectifiers. <clears throat> Let's write down the conclusion first, so you'll know where, what we are going to do, okay? Rectifiers. So on Monday, we covered half-wave rectifiers. And also, we are going to cover full wave and there are several parameters you need to know. VAV, which is the average output, or sometimes it's called DC output. Also, IAV, apparently it's pretty easy to get IAV from VAV, and VRMS. IRMS, efficiency, and PIV. So PIV stands for peak inverse voltage. I will cover this pretty soon. Okay. So for the half wave rectifiers, 
the average voltage is Vm, which is the peak voltage, over 2. So IV is IM over 2. And VRMS is Vm over, oh no, over pi, sorry. Over pi, not 2. VRMS is Vm over 2. IRMS is IM over 2. Efficiency is 40 something, we're going to derive it pretty soon. And uh, PIF is um, VM. For full wave rectifiers, VAV is VM over what? It's 2 VM over pi. We're going to derive it pretty soon, no worries. We just get a table first, so we know what we are getting later. IAV is 2 IM over pi. And uh, VRMS is VM over square root of 2. Uh, same here, IM over square root of 2, which is IRMS. And the efficiency is pretty much twice as much as this one, but we are going to derive it later, not right now. And PIV depends on if it's uh, depends on its structure. So we're going to look at that pretty soon. So uh, think about this to carry this question for the next 20 minutes. Think about it. What are they? Oh, no worries. It's this one. Refer to the notes and lecture videos in uh, in the lecture on Monday, guys. Okay? So everything has been recorded. So I'm not going to repeat how to derive the VAV and VRMS, RMS, IRMS for the half wave rectifiers. So now let's look at so something we left. You know, we didn't do is the efficiency. Half. Efficiency equals to P load over P RMS. So load is actually the, the PAV or PDC, that's a DC output over P RMS. So which is IAV square times R over I. RMS square times R and which is B A V over R and these two R's are cancelled. So eventually you are getting VAV square over VRMS square, which is VM over pi. The reason is, so we derived VAV and VRMS in, uh, in the last lecture. So see, VAV is VM over pi, VRMS is VM over two. So just plug in to here, VM over pi, VM over two. So which are, which are getting eventually is four over pi square, which is 40 something. I don't know how much time to do the calculator, but let me take a look. So 40.56%. That's the efficiency for half wave rectifier. It's not super efficient. It's losing like pretty much 60%. So that's the efficiency. And then PIV. So PIV, the peak inverse voltage, 
If you look at the recti half wave rectifier, so that's the load. And you are having a sine wave swing around the ground line. So when it's up here, it's conducting in this direction. When it's, when it's here, it's getting blocked. So you're actually getting something like this. And then you put a huge cap. You put a cap here as a filter, then you're getting this. It's being filtered out. Low pass filter, right? And when it's swing down below the ground line, what's the maximum voltage this pin will face? Or the voltage across the diode inversely, what's the maximum? So this is actually the highest possible voltage, inverse voltage. of the diode. What's the maximum voltage this pin will face? So the reason we care about that is all the diode has a rating for the inverse voltage. It cannot be higher than, for example, 20 volts, 30 volts. Then it's gonna break down the diode. They get burned. So you do need to care about the, the highest possible inverse voltage will happen in your circuit. So you can pick up the correct diode from the market, from the ditch key, right? What's the highest possible voltage this guy will face, this castle, this pin will handle, or will experience? If this is VM, this is minus VM, what's the highest voltage from here to here? So this circuit is actually pretty simple. Don't see, don't look at this, right? So with conducting, with conducting, it's conducting like this, right? When it's here, and when it's here, it's being blocked. But it's do, trying to do it in this way, but it's blocked. Just like a device, right? you are you are changing the voltage like this, 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 right? But it's a sine wave. It's not square wave. It's a sine wave. What's the what's the maximum voltage drop? For the power supply. At one time. There are, so these two points are not happening at one time. This is time, right? Are these two voltages happen at one time point? No, so they are not, it's not happening. So what's the max, maximum voltage for each point? VM. So it's actually doing this. For example, that's the amplitude of the voltage. Okay? And this is Vm. This is zero. And you have a little dial here. The little dial. It's actually doing this. Uh, uh, uh. This is Vm. So the maximum inverse voltage will be Vm. So what is P? Peak inverse voltage will happen for the diode. Vm for half wave rectifier. That making sense? Okay. That's important to consider. If you pick up the wrong diode, you'll be burned at the first time you turn it on. Now, we have covered everything about the half wave uh, rectifier. What about full wave? There are two structures, uh, two different types of full wave rectifiers.
So the first one is called bridge. So it looks like this. <clears throat> um, I don't know if I should draw a transformer or not. Let's don't draw it for now. See what happens. Did you cover this in circuit one in Dr. Haig's class? Circuit two? Neither? No? Okay, so here's VM. So on the left side, there might be a transformer. Doesn't matter, okay? It can be this can be a transformer. But anyway, we don't care about the anything in front of it. We only care about here. But if you care about this one, it's not really difficult. It's just a ratio. If you have 110 volts here, if it's a 10 to 1 transformer, you're getting 11 volts here. That's it. But anyway, you are getting a voltage, AC voltage, across these two terminals. That's what you are getting, right? And <clears throat> let's try to find out. For example, here is an input. That's VM. What's the output here? So let's um, dismantle this. Um, when it's up here, so it's a positive voltage compared here to here. So actually, this is blocked. So the current flows to here, to here, to here, and back. Okay. So let me draw it. For this part, it works like this. And here is grounded, always grounded. And that's a V out. For this part, it works like this because right now here has a higher potential. So it's going to go this way, which is <clears throat> right because this guy is blocked. This guy is also blocked. Here, this guy is blocked. This guy is blocked. So it flows like this. Making sense? <clears throat> so, in that case, you are always have your either posi positive waves or negative waves being sent to the output. So, you are, the output is always receiving something. So you can get a continuous output. So, the output looks like this. What's the difference compared this one to the half wave rectifier? You are getting more bumps. If you look at the half wave, it's empty here, nothing, so which means you are getting more noise because there's nothing to charge charge out the cap, and it is trying to to fall, but because the cap is large, it is able to hold the charge and filter everything out to smooth it. But here, still. But this falls and will rise again really quickly. It's going like this. So this is called a ripple. Voltage. Uh, so 
0 pi 2 pi. That making sense? Why this is not 2 pi? Why this is not 2 pi? Why this is 2 pi? Because this point, this point, it flips this one to the top. So that's why it's 0 pi 2 pi, 0 pi 2 pi. Now let's take a look at the average voltage. Because the period, even though it's 2 pi, but actually it's pi, we can just integrate this part and average things out so we can get a VF. VF equals to what? 1 over pi, use the same equation, 0 to pi, and Vm sine omega t, t omega t. Nor is not too many stuff re regarding all these things. I'm glad I'm not, I'm not teaching circuit two. If I'm teaching circuit two, I'm, I'm going to cover a lot of these things throughout the semester. Um, only two weeks. Bear with me, I'm sorry. <laughs> and only one whole assignment regarding this. Actually, take VM out. And this guy will be minus cosine omega t. Is that correct? Take the minus sign to the front. It will be cosine pi minus cosine zero. What is cosine pi? Minus one. What is cosine zero? One. One mi minus one minus one minus two and cancel so you are getting 2 vm over pi it's pretty easy to understand so the average signal is always linear that's why when you compare the half wave rectifier and the full wave rectifier it's actually twice as much as this one why Average when you are when you are calculating averages, it's linear, right? So half wave, full wave, half VAV, full VAV, VM over pi, two VM over pi. If you look at the graph from zero to two pi, you have two bumps. In half wave rectifier, you got one bump. Makes sense, right? So it's easy to to understand and remember. So then IAV equals to VAV over R, which R is the load, which is uh, VAV, just substitute this guy using this one, it's 2VM over pi over R, which is also 2VM over R over pi, which will be 2IM over pi. What about RMS? I normally prefer getting IRMS first. <clears throat> root mean square. Root mean square. Oh, I am. Follow the same strategy what we did in the last lecture. Find out this value or solution ourselves and any other things let me take a look um, five efficiency as well what is the efficiency what is uh, PIF I'm gonna cover this later so in that case actually you are not ready for the homework summons I'm gonna move it to Friday and the due date will be you know, be pushed further. I mean, probably I'm gonna fix this later. So now it's due actually next Monday. I'm gonna move it to next uh, Wednesday. Will that work? So we will wrap up everything on Friday. And the only one homework assignment for the rectifiers will be 
uh, due on Wednesday next week. I'm excited about this course. Every time, you know, it's uh, time for this course, I'm super happy. I'm glad to see you guys, because you guys like employees in the company, <laughs> although you are not, but <laughs> promising. It's nothing like just teaching some a boring course. Um, something will happen this semester, I believe. Great.